Hello friends, today's topic of discussion is cinema as a teaching pedagogy. In the earlier lecture on the same theme, we talked about that how cinema can be used as a teaching pedagogy in different ways and how a number of film institutions which have also been opened in different parts of the country and abroad, they also try to communicate the importance of and the value of cinema. So, in that sense, we have also seen that how it has also been used not only from the point of view of the cinema studies, but at the same time we have also seen that in the various other disciplines, cinema has also been used as a source in that context that how cinema can be used as a tool or an instrument of the teaching pedagogy. So, in that sense, we talked about the various kinds of ideas that how cinema is an important concern as a in, in information, education and communication and when one is talking about cinema, not only the dialogues but also the symbols, they play an important role. We also talked about that how cinema is also very important from the point of view of culture and how it reflects the culture and the views of the scholars like Gaston Roberts and Mark Ferro. Pierre Solin, they were also being talked about in our earlier lecture and some of the films from the mythological uh, genre like Raja Harishchand and how parallels could be drawn with regard to the national movement uh, where we see the Gandhian phase where the issue of Satyagraha and the ideals of Raja Harishchand, they had a lot of similarity. In the similar sense, we also talked about a film called Sikandar where we find that this particular film was banned in the cantonments because uh, the references they were being seen in the framework of the British rule uh, where when Porus is asking Sikandar to go away then the reference wa was in a way some kind of seen in the context of the British so, and we when we talk about that how the issues concerning women they were being talked about in the 1930s, 40s and how they were very important from the point of view of the social legacy form movements which were launched in 19th century and how the various thinkers uh, and scholars as well as the activists like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar etc. All of them they were talking about the issues of Sati and Vidori marriage and uh, the emancipation of women was one of the important concerns of the 19th and the 20th century as well. So, in that context there was a film called Dunya Namane which was dealing with the mismatched marriages in the society and in that particular film the female protagonist Shanta Apte exhibits the revolutionary reform spirit of a woman who realizes that the emancipation of women lies in their own hands and they have to in a way take some kind of decisions on their own if they want to come out of their own situation because that particular woman was tricked into marriage uh, where she had to marry an older person. So, she refuses to consummate the marriage and keeping in mind that the film was made in 1937. So, the divorces were not all that common and uh, V. Shantaram in a way uh, gives uh, some kind of an idea in this particular film which was in a way far more revolutionary in that sense that uh, finally the person who had married the woman who is an old man realizes that he had committed a crime or a mistake by marrying a young girl and uh, uh, so he in a way commits suicide in that sense. So, uh, we find that uh, this particular film which was talking about mismatched, mismatched marriages was a uh, was far ahead of its times because these kinds of things they were not generally being talked about and we find that during that particular period any kind of film which was trying to uh, convey any kind of revolutionary ideas from Russia or for that matter democratic ideas from America all of them they were uh, being rejected by the colonial censors and uh, re the censorship authority was arbitrary, politically inspired as well as reactionary in nature. And we also find that many of the principles of Gandhi which were shown in a film called Bhakta Vidur which was an allegorical portrayal of Gandhi's political activities or wrath which was talking about the Gandhian principles. All of these films uh, they were being excised or banned or censored by the authorities and then they were being released at uh, later times. Uh, we also find that how some of the uh, some of the movements of that particular period like PWA, Progressive Writers Association and Indian People's Theatres Association, they were also being launched at the time and how many of the filmmakers, uh, they were also connected uh, with these kinds of movements as well. And uh, when we talk about a film called The Hage, 
uh, Vishantaram, who is the maker of this film, he has argued that when the Hage was released in Bihar, the members of the Legislative Assembly, they were shocked. Uh, he said that uh, they were inspired uh, by his picture and uh, in his own words he says that I think that it must have been the cause of the anti-dowry bill being passed in the Bihar assembly. So, Vishantaram says that he is not claiming the entire credit for it that my picture alone did it this is what he argues. Uh, but it happened immediately after the release of the film called The Hage, uh, when a great controversy was raised in the state. So, when the anti dowry bill was passed in the parliament here, the members took the picture and showed it to all the parliamentarians and after a week or so, they introduced the bill in the parliament as well and it was being passed. So, these bills they help to a certain extent, but unless you create this impact in the minds of the people, it is of no use. So, these pictures definitely have an impact. So, legislation is one important aspect, but at the same time the social change is also very, very important that unless this social change happens in the society, uh, when the mindsets they are going to change in that sense, then only the real reform uh, will come in the society. But it, is, it was also uh, very important from the point of view of the filmmakers that they were ready to make such kind of films which were trying to reform the society uh, and which would add to the issue of the nation building in that context. So, we find that not only during the 1930s, but during the 1940s as well such kind of films uh, they were being made uh, which were trying to communicate an idea of nation building in the initial phases and the idea of nation building gets reflected in the 1950s in a more overt manner when uh, we have uh, films like Nayador or Pagam for that matter or Mother India. So, all these films they were trying to communicate important ideas regarding the nation building including Sujata in 1959 and uh, we also find that partition or partition violence was one important concern in the 1947 and thereafter and how people they were they got displaced from their own homes and how they were being called refugees in their own homeland that was the kind of a situation and the uh, people those who migrated from one area to another they they were surviving in the refugee colonies so the violence of the partition in the framework of the personal loss or pain uprooting from the native place or the fear all of them they were being reflected in some of the films and the ideas of sexuality and the gender relations where the bodies of the women became the site of conflict between two communities that is also being seen. So, we find that some of the films on partition like Lahore in 1949, Garm Hawa in 1971, Gadar Ek Prem Katha in 2000 and Pinjar in 2003. So, all these uh, films we find that they were trying to portray some kind of an idea with regard to partition and when you talk about a film called Lahore in 1949. Uh, we find that it was talking about the displacement of women, that how women, those who stayed in Pakistan, uh, though they were Hindus and they, their families came to India, or women, those who stayed in India, those who were Muslims and those who wanted to go to Pakistan with their families, but it did not happen. So, there was a department with regard to the rehabilitation of these women that was also open and uh, whatever the rough estimates we have, it is being argued that nearly 10 lakh women, they got displaced in this manner. So, that kind of a tragedy which was there uh, in those times and how the British, they uh, took the shortest flight in that sense, their flight has been called as a shameful flight by, uh, by some of the scholars that how Stanley Wolpert being one. And we find that such kind of portrayals largely try to communicate about the tragedy of Pakistan, the partition where India and Pakistan, both of them, they were being created in two, in two states or countries. Then we also see that similar kind of reflections, they were seen in other films as well, uh, where we have Pinger again, which was talking about uh, the similar kinds of concerns which were being shown in Lahore, though Lahore has a, uh, has a happy kind of an ending where uh, Nargis who is being rehabilitated, she comes back, but in the case of Pinjar, it does not happen where uh, the woman, she had to stay back in Pakistan only. So, these kinds of things, they, they, they were being shown in uh, uh, in in those films and they were trying to reflect that kind of a reality which was happening 
and we have seen that uh, such kind of studies they have also been conducted. So, how cinema in that sense can be used as uh, teaching pedagogy as it is trying to convey in the important developments of those times and with regard to partition we also see that various kinds of uh, sources they have also been used and today when there is a lot of focus on the alternative sources we also find that personal diaries, letters, pamphlets, memoirs, oral sources in the form of interviews and the literature is also used as a source of uh, historical inquiry. So, we find that how Indian cinema has also used literature in its depiction of the partition experiences. So, all these kinds of alternate sources they have in a way enhanced uh, uh, the studies which have been done on partition and we have also seen that when they have been used they have not only communicated the personal pain of the people those who were the victims of partition or those who were witnesses of partition, but at the same time uh, they have also un, uh, in a way enhanced our understanding of that particular period and also in a way uh, they have tried to communicate that how uh, uh, the political establishment of that point of time was not able to handle that kind of a situation. And if uh, uh, the administration would have handled the situation in a better manner, then that this scale of violence uh, could have been avoided. And uh, we also see that uh, during that time there was another film called Khamosh Pani which was made in 2003 and it was by Pakistani filmmaker Sabiha Sumar and uh, it was about a widowed mother and her young son and who and whose son is blatantly communal and the film is set up in 1970s and how the Sikh and Hindu women they got converted to Islam uh, during that period. and when finally her brother who comes from India uh, to Pakistan in search of her in 1970s and uh, we find that uh, he is able to locate her, but uh, by that time we, uh, who she has a son who is uh, communal in that sense and when this kind of a reality dawns on that, on, on that son that he belongs to a Hindu mother who was being converted. Uh, when she was, uh, she when, when she stayed back in Pakistan after partition. So, these kinds of portrayals they raise a lot of concerns which have been very real and a number of initiatives at different levels they have been started even after partition that many a times we read stories that the lost brothers and sisters of those times they were able to meet now because of the various kinds of developments in the technology where we have so many social media and other kinds of channels uh, where uh, these things they have become comparatively uh, uh, the examples are comparatively numerous which was not happening in the uh, initial period when the partition took place. So, we also see that uh, such kind of a tragedy has also been archived in the 1947 partition archive and it is some sort of a movement to preserve the life stories shaped by partition in terms of recording the history and how the murders, rapes and the shattered families, uh, their, their, their experiences they have been there in these archives and they also have these memories of a shared partitioned past. So, the we see that these kinds of potent memories from a divided India could be seen in these kinds of archives and uh, they in a way try not only to communicate what all happened in those times, but at the same time they also serve as a lesson that what all has happened in the past may not happen in future. So, uh, we should have that kind of an atmosphere in the society that uh, the events of partition the way they were being uh, done or shown or happened on the streets uh, where people they were killing each other and regardless of the kind of uh, the situation of law and order. So, all these things they can be avoided in that sense and then thereafter we find that especially in the 1940s and in the 1950s we find that some of the films they were also influenced by the neorealist or the Italian uh, neorealism and the Italian neorealism carried the features of non-professional actors, outdoor locations, simple dialogues and the issues uh, uh, they were being seen in the neorealist films. So, when you talk about the Italian neorealist cinema, we find that the filmmakers like De Sica, 
uh, Roberto Rossellini and uh, Visconti all of them they were the Italian filmmakers and their films uh, whether Shoe Shine or Bicycle Thieves all these Germany uh, year 0 or the earth trembles all of them they were trying to communicate or the Rome open city uh, by Robert Rossellini all of them they were trying to commit, communicate some kind of a reality which was there of the times of uh, uh, fascism and thereafter and uh, these films they were trying to communicate a reality which was against the fascist uh, portrayal. So, uh, neuralism as a movement was uh, seen in that sense that it was an anti-fascist movement and we also find some kind of reverberations uh, in India where we see that uh, some of the films uh, which were made in India uh, they were also inspired by the neorealist ideals whether uh, Dobi Gazameen, Piasa, Jagte Raho all these films they were seen to be neorealist in the 19. 40s we find that uh, Nietzsche Nagar or Dharti Ke Lal uh, they were also being referred as the neorealist cinema. So, when we talk about this kind of an impact of the neorealist films on the Indian cinema and how Indian cinema in a way uh, in a way portrayed these kinds of ideals in their own manner and here it tried to adapt them according to the Indian situation of dance and songs and many times uh, there was some kind of a debate that whether the kind of uh, the happy endings which are shown in the film because many a times in the neuralist films we find that the endings were not happy in that sense. So, uh, we find that these filmmakers they, they were also concerned with the box office returns as well and many a times the producers they wanted to in a way convey the uh, happy ending where we find that because of which uh, they may not lose on the finances and the film is successful. And uh, we find that filmmakers like Bimal Roy and Gurudat they were far successful in their portrayals and Dobi Gazameen and Sujata by Bimal Roy. Piyasa Kagas Ke Fool and Sahib Bibi and Gulam, all these three films by Gurudat, they became very, very popular and they were not only popular from that sense, but at the same time uh, we find that uh, uh, these films, they were trying to communicate what all was happening in the society of those times because uh, Piyasa Kagas Ke Fool, Sahib Bibi and Gulam, all of them, uh, they were imbued with the kind of a pessimism in that sense that how society was becoming more and more materialistic in nature and uh, the, uh, the alcoholism of Meena Kumari in Sahib Bibi Gulam is seen as some sort of a, a protest in that sense that she was not ready with the kind of a structure which was uh, there in the society. Similarly, uh, Piyasa and Kagaj Ke Fool also try to communicate uh, the materialistic forces which are becoming more and more dominant in the society. And on the other hand, Dobi Gazameen uh, talks about the struggle of a person who goes from a village to a city and how he wants to earn money so that he can get back the Dobi Gazameen or two acres of land uh, which has been given to a money lender uh, so that that land could be taken back by the person who is. So, this uh, and then there is an industrialist who wants to use that land so that industries could be set up there. So, this concern of depeasantization in those times and when you talk about uh, Sujata in this particular film uh, we find that the issue of untouchability uh, was raised and finally we find that how the issue of the intermingling of the blood of the landlady as well as the adopted girl Sujata that happens and the film also shows uh, that these kinds of distinctions which are there in the society they should be uh, done away with. Then we also find some of the films by Mehboob Khan and uh, if you see a uh, film called Mother India and then An in Andaz they were being made by uh, Mehboob Khan and Mehboob Khan uh, was also considered as a showman of his own time and Mother India uh, was earlier remade uh, in, in uh, earlier made as 
uh, a film called Aurat in 1940 and the similar story was taken up by him in this film in Mother India 1957 and this film became very popular it was sent for the Oscars as well and how the equation of a mother with the nation it tries to reflect that and also trying to communicate what all was happening in a in an agrarian society and it also talks about the problems or the dangers which are being perpetrated by the money lenders and uh, another film called andaz was uh, in a, in the context of the modernity and the tradition debate that how the ideas of modernity when they are being shown uh, in 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 the in the new generation then the way they can uh, create some kind of havoc in their own personal lives uh, that was being shown in this uh, particular film so we find that during this particular period we also find uh, some kind of a socialist ideas in 1960s uh, where these socialist ideas were seen whether in the framework of the nayador for that matter or in the framework of pegam uh, which was made in 1960s so these films uh, uh, they they in a way try to communicate uh, the, these kinds of ideas and uh, these these particular films they were trying to talk about the concerns of the labor for example pegam talks about the concerns of labor and uh, we also find that nayador was in the framework of the mechanization which was happening or whether we should stick to uh, our own traditional ways so this kind of uh, these kinds of ideas concerning development these kinds of debates they were there in the society that to what extent we should go for mechanization they, they were also being reflected in the cinema so in this way cinema is trying to communicate what all is happening in the society in its own manner by taking the cinematic liberty as well but at the same time it is also trying to teach uh, about that particular period from a perspective then we find that 1970s was a period of uh, the angry young man amitabh bachchan and the ideas of anti establishment and how he was being shown as a hero of the masses the way his dialogue delivery was very impressive and many of his films they got uh, successful uh, during this particular period and uh, we also see the middle class cinema during this time that rishikesh mukherjee and basu chatterjee both of them uh, they were being uh, they were being connected by, by the middle class cinema chupke chupke golmal khubsurat and bavarchi were some of the important films of rishikesh mukherjee uh, who also made mili uh, for that matter or anand and these films they were very very popular in that sense and not only popularity but they were also trying to stick to the uh, middle class values and uh, one of the films by basu chatterji choti si baat again was uh, made with uh, a limited star cast limited star cast in the sense that uh, not many huge or big actors they were being taken Uh, but the the way the presentations they were being made uh, the way film uh, unfolded uh, on the screen uh, these films they were trying to convey the middle class values of those times and we also see that how the art cinema or the alternative cinema which was dealing with the issues of the daily life struggles of uh, the masses in the framework of the poverty etc they were also being made during this time and films like ardha satya akrosh of sham banigal uh, then uh, we find of sham banigal we have ankur nishant in manthan and uh, govind helani is ardha satya in akrosh uh, we find that such kind of a cinema was trying to communicate uh, the issues of uh, the daily life so uh, we find that uh, cinema was trying to communicate these ideas in a certain manner and uh, the issues concerning the society whether the status of women or the status of the people those who were on the marginalized uh, uh, marginalized section of society they were being communicated so all these kinds of ideas they could be seen in the films of those times and thereafter uh, we find in the 1990s when the liberalization and the globalization happens then a lot of changes they happen in the themes and the presentations and Uh, with the coming of the multiplexes low budget films they also come 
and uh, we find that uh, a new kind of a cinema was also being made uh, which was catering to the NRI audience or the audience which was living in the far off lands and we also find that changes also came in the production exhibition as well as the consumption of the films and the way women they were also being portrayed in the film so so the study of women from that point of view uh, where they were being far more passive in the film medium where the hero or the male protagonist was more important to making of some of the films which were the women centric films and the coming of the more women in the writing direction and other departments of the filmmaking has brought about some kind of refreshing change in that sense and all this has contributed in that sense where we can use cinema as a, as a teaching pedagogy tool in that sense. So with this I would like to end the discussion. Thank you very much.